Whew. Okay, we're about a kilometer up the hill. There's no view to see yet, but what we do have is one of the little plaques. There's a few other plaques on the way up. All of them have various contexts and various meanings. I wanted to draw attention to this one because of the recent devastating bushfires we've had in Australia that most scientists argue is at least partly related to climate change, creating the conditions for fire to more easily take and more easily spread. Uh, fire, the regular controlled use of fire, promoted the regeneration of important food plants and enabled animals that came to graze on the fresh shoots to be hunted more easily. It kept the country open, making movement easier. So indigenous peoples in this region used fire to cut their way through the bush and it's very easy for me to walk the tracks of the Kuru Walk and imagine this is where indigenous people hunted, but there were no tracks, of course. Um, indigenous people moved through this brush braving the venomous snakes that live in the area, uh, setting fire to things to clear land. The shoots brought in more animals um, that they could eat as well. Uh, we're getting fairly deep. Let's see if I can get a bit of a wider lens angle so I can start to show you just how deep this forest is. And it is significant. These tracks are carved out throughout the Otways though. It's, um, this is a pretty easy going track. It's one or two, it's two or three kilometers. It's only about a one or two rated hiking track. Is that a... Nope, thought I had a snake there for a second. Thought that would have been exciting for everyone. Uh, not for me, of course. Uh, but uh, I've got some people flying in. Uh, I don't know what they're called, but they're very popular on the coast. It's like a hang glider. They jump off cliffs and then the, when the wind conditions are correct. Just got a family coming. I, the weird guy talking into his phone. Hello. How you doing? Uh, very popular area um, for tourists to walk around as well. But uh, you can start to get a sense, and I'll just turn it around, of the denseness of the forest. And these cliff sides all overlook the, the beaches as well and the water. So combination of hunting for land-bound animals, but also fishing, and the sort of aquatic pastimes that go hand in hand with living and working by the sea. In fact, it's something that people still aspire to today, where once upon a time this coastline in, was made up of small country-based communities. Uh, now it's essentially millionaires row, and you need to have more than a million dollars to buy any kind of house in this region. My family purchased here originally in about 1979, not here particularly, Separation Creek, which is further down the coast. I won't actually get that far down the coast today for these videos. I wish I, I probably should invent a reason, but I don't want the entire introductory videos to be about this coast, just a few of them. Um, now, I thought I was being clever by starting the video. I thought I was about to come, to, oh, here we go. There's a plaque coming up, which is good. Um, Cause I was starting to run out of things to say about this region. Well, not really, actually, I could probably speak for a long time about this region. Uh, one of the things that have disturbed me doing this cultural walk a couple of times over the last year has been the names of some of the traditional plants that indigenous people in this area used. And hopefully this will be an example of one of them. <clears throat> this one's the bugget, the Australian grass tree, uh, produced a hard waterproof resin used to cement stone axe heads and spearheads to the, to the tip of wooden handles. This isn't actually one of the ones I was hoping to draw attention to. I haven't done this walk in a few months. I'm starting to, I'm not 100% sure where the plaque, I might have walked past it already. Um, there's lots of plaques. So as I said, do come check it out for yourself. Some of the other plaques, just in case I've walked past it and I don't find it, because some of them are in the brush. Uh, some of the grass stuffs that, and, and the plants that indigenous people use to, to build hatches, to build homes, to, to, to construct pottery, well, not pottery, but you know what I mean, to, to construct bowls and plates and this sorts of thing. We've gone ahead and named several of the streets in nearby Geelong. I say nearby, it's about 30 or 40 kilometres away. Uh, we've named some of our streets after these indigenous trees and plants and stuff. And again, I, I'm sort of troubled by it in a number of ways. One is that I, I grew up most of my life in Geelong and I never understood the indigenous meaning of, of Mallop Street, for example, one of the major streets in Geelong. I understand now that it's named after an indigenous uh, plant, a pl plant that indigenous people used and cultivated. Um, but my schooling never involved 
any discussion of that. Um, indeed, uh, uh, the indigenous parts of our world are often whitewashed in a whole variety of ways, and we're not limited to Australia in this example either. In America, they deal with similar issues. It's a little bit different in England, where the the the, the one America's much oh, sorry, Europe's much older than Australia and America in terms of white settlement, not in terms of indigenous populations. But of course, a lot of British people can claim that they are roughly from the area that their ancestors lived in for many, many centuries. Um, and of course, Australians and Americans can't, can't claim the same thing. Yes, we found what I was looking for. So luckily I didn't walk past it and the, this giant bug continues to terrorize me. Uh, food and medicine plants, uh, Yipert. Um, uh, the two I want to focus on are the bottom two, in fact. Hopefully that's... I'm just going to have a sneaky peek at the screen. I, I do appear to have it in the screen, which is good. Um, Mula at the bottom. Leaves used to treat rheumatism. Roots and young stems relieve pain and itching from insect bites. I tell you, I could use a few of them now. And Gering at wattle. Uh, golden wattle, most other wattles. Seed pods, edible, high in protein, and contains a gum that is sweet, nourishing, and was added to drinks. Uh, Gering hap is a street in Geelong. Moolap is a street in Geelong. I'll just show you the paraglider. Show you this giant bug that's buzzing around me. Better than a snake. So as you can start to see, it, it, it should be troubling as we spend our semester learning about Europeans, Sigmund Freud, Anna Freud, uh, Karen Horne. You know, lots of white Europeans make up um, any study of behavioral psychology. Because um, that's the nature of the beast. That's the nature of what it was. It was a European system of thought. And I just want, and you know, we may not spend that much time talking about Indigenous culture beyond this, this, these vignettes. But I felt it was really important to set the scene, to, to set that context. We're talking about behaviour. We can never lose sight of the, of the really big picture. Um, I'm reminded in this instance of the writer, the feminist, feminist technology writer Donna Haraway, who... I hope many of you will have heard, she's a very famous and very trendy thinker and theorist at the moment. She has numerous YouTube um, lectures available on YouTube. Um, in fact, you know what, I'm gonna, I'm gonna source one. And I'm gonna put it on the week one tab for you to all read during the, during the first week, which has got no, the first week where we've got no classes. She talks about staying with the trouble in her most recent book from 2016. And staying with the trouble, anyone who's read Haraway, this will be familiar, but, Staying with the trouble means trying to include all elements of the story. Trying to include all elements of the picture uh, that sits around us, that sits under the ground, that sits in the culture, the history of, of the places where we sit and stand and make our lives. If we only think of the surfaces, so in thinking about behaviour and psychology, if we only think of what we can see before us, if we only think of it in terms of personality tests, if we only think of it in terms of the theory of people like Sigmund Freud, we only get half the picture. And this is also why I picked the case studies um, for later in the semester. I wanted to problematize and trouble some of the theory we were learning. I'll end this second vignette with, with just to show you some of the most breathtaking views on this entire coastline. And it makes me sad to think that we took this from the indigenous peoples of this area. I'm grateful to be appreciating and enjoying it now. But I, ho I, hope, I hope you get a good sense of what I'm looking at. Yeah, it's, it's possible that you don't. Camera can always change things. Oh, and those guys make me feel sick to my stomach. You can see the surface on the beach. There's some cranking waves out the back and these guys are paddling around on the shore. So I'm not entirely certain of what they're doing down there. They've got longboards, they're longboarders. So we'll forgive them, perhaps. Um, Bells Beach is just over there around that corner. I know many of you will, if you're not from Melbourne, if you're not from the Victorian region, you will come down and check out Bells Beach some point I dare say why not do it during the surf contest I'm gonna be at the surf contest the entire week I always get a weekly pass so I might see you there let me know if you want to catch up that week um, right bye for now I'm gonna continue my trek down the coast in about 25 no longer because I got to walk to the spot in about 40 minutes it's late in the day on February 25th I think it's late in the day on February 25th uh, I had to wait for the low tide to show you some of these next sites. I'll speak to you in about 30, 40 minutes um, from, from one of the encampment sites where the Gradition Road was built in 1919.